Today's video is powered by SwitAirsoft.com Here we go people! Here we are again with yet another classic World War II representation in Airsoft and technically you could also say World War I. This is the model 1918 and if you really want to be specific as it says at the bottom a2. The reason being, this is the representation of the real version that did have later on one or two modifications. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so the first thing we are presented with is your instruction manual. Yeah, pretty decent. Here we go, the reveal. Oh boy. Okay, so what do we get in the box? Well, because this is the upgraded version as sent to me by Sweet Airsoft, they tend to put the original stock parts back in the box once they've ripped them out of the actual primary. And they should be here, look, the original in a barrel with your hop-up bucking. Okay, you also get these. Now, I'm not sure why, let me just, make sure they are what I think they are right okay so clearly butt plate shoulder rest and one or two other bits and pieces including a ball bearing the only thing I can think of because look well it's already got a butt plate and the shoulder rest on there so I'm not sure why there's another package I'm not complaining <laughs> uh, of them but um yeah these Right, any more for any more before we get to them? Of course. Your bipod, which you have to install yourself. Which isn't a bad thing really, because I do know some operators don't even attach it to their bars because they can be a little bit problematic. Even on the real version, I was watching the Hiccup 45 channel and even he had to keep trying to tighten them up just to, you know, keep them out of the way. So, we get to the mag. Oh my gosh, how authentic does this look even to the point where if you look at the top there when I angle it it looks as if you put real rounds in the top looks like it's real ha! and then of course at the bottom you've got your windy wheel or you can use a key okay uh, poison uh, what else okay here we go ha! oh my goodness Oh my goodness, the weight of this thing! Oh ha! Would you look at this? My goodness, I have to hold it back here. It's so long and it's so heavy, especially if you hold it at arm's length. Damn! Let's install the bipod. There you go, look, look at this epic beast. And I truly understand now why this bipod, mm, it has its uses, but you see how it's standing like that? The slightest knock, watch what happens. I'm gonna put my hand here because I don't want it to break or snap anything. Watch, slightest knock, there you go. See that? I'll tell you what, let me just complete that picture. Wow, <laughs> I mean, yeah, round of applause. I mean, look at it. Oh my goodness. This thing is beyond epic. It's gone way beyond that. <laughs> it's awesome. 
Okay, look, let's go through the features, the design, and what makes this the A2. As mentioned before, what makes this the A2 version is two or three things. You've got your shoulder rest, which is on a hinge, and then right here you have this little compartment. On this airsoft version, it's pretty much just for show, but I'm sure you can push it down and have a look to see if there's a battery in there. But you do have to take off this butt plate to install a battery. This really is a beefy bit of kit, I'm telling you. <laughs> but anyway, as we move to this very substantial and authentic looking stock, now you would be forgiven for thinking this is some sort of polymer or plastic or Bakelite or whatever, because of the darker stain and that's just exactly what it is. It just has a darker stain to the rest of the wood furniture. So um, yeah, it is an all wood and metal build. And what I love about this as well, because it's so heavy, because it's such a big unit, um, I'm really happy that everything is solid. I've literally not felt any play here or anywhere else on this piece, which is good. Can't say the same for another brand that is a little bit cheaper. But anyway, this is the s and and so far so good and it's upgraded. So yeah, your wood stuck with a darker stain and then right here you have your swivel, sling point and this hole. This was for a monopod. Nice. Okay, as we move along, where should we go? Should we go to the top? Okay, look, look at that awesome rear sight. Nice, looking pretty decent and it's fully adjustable. Look, you've got your windage. You can see that moving to the side as I turn it. Let me just uh, center it again a bit. And then of course this, absolutely loving this, just like its real counterpart. See that? Let me just send it back down. So here you've got your charging handle your fire selector switch, loving how they've included that right there, that little button or notch that prevents this fire selector switch accidentally going into fire mode. And look, you've got your full metal. By the way, everything black on this is metal, okay? Everything else, real wood. Right, so there's your trigger, trigger guard, and look, big old mag release just there, just like its real counterpart. Push it forward and out comes your mag. And then right here, you've got that nice rugged piece of metal right there. It's an extension of the trigger guard. The earlier models didn't have this on the real steel I'm talking. Um, this is so that you can guide your magazine in a lot easier. And then right here, you've got this big old chunky mag. Now, if I can bring you back to this fire selector switch, we will go into this a little bit more once I get a battery pack installed, but look, just like it's a real counterpart. Now, the real counterpart technically just had safe, full auto, and full auto a bit faster, <laughs> okay? So uh, we'll see. Okay, as we move along, we get to this pin right here. By the way, don't you just love how pre-weathered or aged this actual forearm looks on here? Real wood again. Um, yeah, it looks decent. It doesn't look like them really light colored cheap bits of wood. Cool. But anyway, this pin right here, if you take that out or off, you can release your forearm and then, you know, you can continue to take down this bad boy. Now, talking about the forearm, here it is, a lovely bit of wood right there. And if you go up, you also have your real wood and metal carry handle. And I don't know if this is because it's new and probably it will loosen up after time, especially with the weight of this bad boy. This thing is quite firm when you move it. You can move it to the side, but it is quite firm. I would suggest constant use or movement of this will loosen it up after a while. But you know, it is airsoft. Okay, so there's your front sling point, your mock gas cylinder, your huge outer barrel, and then of course you've got this big hooded front sight. And then we get to this epic looking business end. You've got this huge flash hider. Again, everything that's black on this is full metal. And then yes, as I've showed you earlier, you've got your bipod, which by the way, spins all the way around, baby. <laughs> 
Oh, and by the way, the bipod legs can extend to a ridiculous height. And I think it's fantastic. Look at this, you just uh, undo these wing nuts right here on both sides and uh, look at that bad boy. <laughs> look at that bad boy. Okay, let's take a look at the other side. Oh, she really is a beauty. Anyway, as you can see, not a lot going on on this side. However, take a look there. So naturally on the real version, that's where all your casings will come firing out when you're firing this bad boy. But this being airsoft and not a shell ejecting or a gas blowback version, behind there is where you adjust your hop up. Now I know I call it a mock charging handle, but it does have a functionality. So yeah, charging handle back, there you go. And right there is where you adjust your hop up. Right, I know what you're thinking. I'm back on this side, by the way. Um, get rid of that horrible sticker mic, done. And then I'll get the mag ready. There you go, sticker gone. Right, let's get that mag ready. 190 rounds. Um, yeah, once you get it in, you've got to do the old windy thing. And to get the BBs in, you just open up that little trap door right there and Fill it up. Yuck. I still think the mag looks amazing. <laughs> now, as some of you may or may not know, I don't just, you know, collect these things. Sometimes I do play Airsoft, but I don't just collect and review and show you these things. I am involved in movie making where some of these are used. Uh, for the purpose of movie making, props. Um, I also like to collect stuff that interest me, okay? So anything to do with like the wars or different eras in time, I'm a bit of a collector. So having said that, did you know you can collect things like this called a uh, collector grade inert ammo? Um, now, as you know, the BAR was involved with what? World War One, World War Two, and some other wars. And as you can see here, these collector grade inner ammo, they're all classified for different times, eras, wars. So this one's got Vietnam War. I know that the real steel is a 30 aught six. And if you look on this right there, there's a 30 aught six ammo round in there, inert, of course. And there, there's your uh, confirmation. And it even says 30 aught six bar. I also know it was involved in World War One and World War Two. I can't find my World War Two package. It's in there somewhere, but I've got the World War One one. <laughs> World War One one. Anyway, look again. The bar is featured. Right. Let's get the battery pack in. Say hello to my little friend. Yep, that's the one thing that really puts me off this platform is having to unscrew those two big old screws just to get into the battery compartment. However, when you do it tactically like me, it becomes fun. <laughs> so right there is your battery compartment. There's your fuse and somewhere <laughs> is your Tamiya plug there. And it kind of looks like you've got a fairly decent amount of battery space, but looks can be deceiving. Yeah, let's try this crane sort of nunchuck style battery pack, see if we can uh, get along with that. No, absolutely not. Like, so one of them, one of the sticks out of the two will go right down, but this one has nowhere to go, look. Okay, so here's your 8.4 volt type battery pack. Yeah just about you can see the top of it there then you'd have to push everything to the side yeah a bit of a squeeze one of those should fit and then you've got this oh mate it's gone all the way down look let me show you there the pair of them has gone down that much deeper hole down there which only one of the sticks here would do both of them wouldn't, and that wouldn't at all. Look, let me just show you. That hole all the way down there, these bad boys fits in there 
perfectly. Right, so here we go. I'm so worried about this toppling over. <laughs> I've enlisted the help of a pistol stand. So here we go. Back to this trigger function. Here you have your safe. You have that little button there that blocks the fire selector switch from accidentally going into fire or vice versa, accidentally going into safe when you go from F to A. So what would be really interesting is to know if this airsoft replica, which looks pretty faithful so far, whether that is full auto and that too is also full auto, but at a different rate of fire. So here goes. So I'm gonna just pull the trigger once just to make sure it works. So, you know, you've got to sort of press that little button in as you move it off safe. And let's see if this works. Oh, nice. So it did a double shoot there because it is full auto. Let me just see if I can execute a single shot. Yes, easy. Let me just hold that trigger down. Oh, that sounds so intimidating and it doesn't even sound like an AEG. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let me just push that to that other mode. That almost went all the way around. In fact, it does look. <laughs> so let me just push it to, um, yeah, that one. And let's see if it is also full auto. Yeah, baby. This is what I mean about the fire selector switch. Imagine you're in that mode or even that mode right there, but more so that mode. And you just wanna, for some reason, for reenactment purposes, wanna put it on that rate of fire right here. Cause right now I don't even know if there's a difference between the two. You don't want to accidentally be pushing that fire selector switch back to the safe position. So watch, boom, stops right there. Unless you press that button in. Nice. Okay, disclaimer, I'm telling you right now, if you live in a country where your FPS limits are not limited to 370 on full auto, when you buy one of these bad boys, it will shoot around the 370 mark up to 380 max. I could have accepted one that shoots at around 370, but that is just too close, okay? Because if it trips over, you never know who's watching. So for that reason, I have had this bad boy downgraded, but that's just the spring. Everything else is still upgraded. So it only shoots around 320 to 330. Okay, I'm trying to do single shots here. Okay. Uh, uh. Okay, let's just do full auto. Come on, baby. Would you look at that? 18.4 rounds per second. And we're looking at a comfortable 330. Let's see if the rate of fire changes when I change it to that setting. Whether it be slower or faster, do you think it will be like the real steel? <laughs> let's see. I doubt it, but here goes. gosh uh, to be fair that could be just a coincidence because you know <laughs> rate of fire can go up and down a little but to be fair that's 16.9 but we're back on this setting let's see if it goes back up to 18 rounds per second i doubt it nah <laughs> it's pretty much the same now i'm not gonna try and be all fancy schmancy with this i'm just gonna point and pull the trigger Now that's what I'm talking about. Even though I just had it on that full auto, in fact, it only does full auto, but you can do single shots, but you know, you gotta get your trigger finger game up. But even on full auto, the precision on this bad boy is pretty decent. And again, that's down to it being upgraded with TNT parts and Lonex. And we, what I'm gonna do, I've already proved the point. Damn decent accuracy there on full auto. I'm just gonna show you me firing this right there, right up close and personal. 
and I uh, will again make use of these ridiculously long bipod legs. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see if we can cut that circle out. Yeah, baby! <laughs> so there you go, people. This is the epic s and M1918 A2 Browning Automatic Rifle Upgraded Version. The upgraded version that features the TNT S Plus Precision Barrel, that's 520mm long, a TNT T Hop Up Bucking, Lonex Cylinder, Wii Piston Head, and Shimming. This thing has been put together so solidly, I am very impressed. However, would you believe all the things I don't like about this literally translate to the real version too? So in a way you could see it as a positive, a true, true reflection of the real steel because I hate everything there is to hate about the bipod. Doesn't feel very stable, very fiddly to use. Those wing nuts, after a little while, they just come loose again and then you've got to tighten it up again. Again, I saw that in the, I think it was the Hickok 45 video. He's done a couple of videos on the real steel of this. And also, Forgotten Weapons. Um, no one in the real steel world appears to be a fan of the bipod. And I would pretty much say it's the same in the airsoft world. Like many, you will probably end up taking it off. But overall, I absolutely love this s and representation of the real Browning automatic weapon. Structurally sound, will that last? Who knows? I'll let you know way down in the future, but for now, it's a solid piece. Thanks again to Sweet Airsoft. Check the video description for a direct link to this upgraded version. And make sure you catch me next time on the Airsoft Mike YouTube channel.